The gas tax holiday is basically a gimmick. It is uh, maybe a little helpful to people. It shows you what the state of affairs should normally be. We shouldn't have to be paying high taxes on gas, and it would be nice if it just completely went away forever. That's not going to happen. This is just a little move to potentially save you a little bit of money in the very short term, and it's not going to solve the problem. Of course, the problem needs to be solved on the supply side, of course, and that means we have another problem possible proposal coming from the Biden administration that absolutely will, of course, address the demand side yet again of this equation. They want to t- they're talking about stimulus gas cards, which is sound. I mean, it sounds pretty great, right? You get a bunch of money on a gas card. You can spend it on gas, helps you cover that cost. Isn't that wonderful? Although it is kind of a strange thing coming from this particular administration, given the fact that they keep saying the gas companies are really, really greedy. But of course, the problem we have is inflation. And the way we're addressing this issue is, of course, to spend a bunch more money and then spend that on $100 billion of gas cards, which will then be paid to the companies you're saying are so greedy. Not exactly sure how any of this works. And you know what? I'm not alone here. I don't think Biden knows it either. That's kind of the problem, uh, as they say. Now, of course, some people are pointing out, you know, the spending thing has been kind of the issue here, right? You've been spending trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. And now you want to spend trillions and trillions and trillions of more dollars. Seems to be the only solution to anything. CNBC had Cecilia Rouse on. She's the uh, chair of the Council of Economic Advisors. And they said, hey, you know, maybe spending money, does that seem a little tone deaf right about now? Is it possible, as Americans are feeling that pain, that 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 message is a little tone deaf and could have a really kind of negative impact in terms of consumer sentiment? So I'm not sure which part is the tone deaf. The president is looking to lower costs for important... Go ahead. But it's, he's focused on reducing costs for some of the most important items for Americans, reducing prescription costs, reducing costs for child care, helping people get back to work because they are able to balance responsibilities mm. at home and at work. Oh. So these are the kinds of investments we need to make. They spend out over time. Mm-hmm. We know that this president is focused on reducing the deficit. Uh, This deficit is on track to be reduced by $1.7 trillion this year. That's more than happened under uh, President uh, President Trump. And so he understands the role the deficit plays also in, in, in reducing inflation. But we also have to make the kinds of investments to make sure that our economy continues to thrive as we get to the other side of this. You might watch that and you say, wow, that uh, that that Cecilia Rouse gives pretty crappy answers to pretty basic questions. Like, that was a really terrible answer and a terrible defense of a bunch of bad policies. Granted, it's a difficult thing to do to come out and defend policies like Joe Biden's, but still, that was a pretty bad job. And at that point, I would note, why are you being racist? She happens to be the first African-American to ever hold that position. Have you ever had a problem with a Democrat before this? No, you only don't like black Democrats. You only don't like a black economist. And that shows you're racist, you racist, racisty, racist. Remember that. By the way, here she is giving another crappy answer. Inflation has wiped out, obliterated really, all of the wage gains since the, the start of the pandemic. So Americans are actually feeling feeling poor as as the price of goods goes up and their wages go down. It feels like now's the time to just really focus on fighting inflation. Yet, as recently as last week, the Build Back Better bill was still on the table. Uh, Is now the time for the administration to be pushing spending billions more or focusing on inflation? So the president is focused on inflation. And in fact, Build Back Better is a long is is a uh, a uh, long run investment oh. so to increase the economic capacity so that mm-hmm. we're better able to address inflation. Oh. Parts of Build Back right. Better include addressing costs such as prescription drugs. Mm. It, inc- it includes making investments to make the transition to clean energy, which we know we need to be making as well. So that's not the kind of dollars that is stimulus. Oh. It's investment, and it's the kinds of investments <laughs> that we know actually okay. pay for themselves over time. So that's smart economic policy uh. right now. Uh, <laughs> the president is doing trying to take the kinds of action 
actions that would address gas prices in the more immediate term while also making the kinds of investments we need we know we need to know to make right. in order to make the transition to steady sustainable growth that will benefit all Americans don't worry about trying to improve you're doing a great job and you nailed that one that was that was fantastic remember guys those aren't the kind of dollars that cause inflation other kinds of dollars cause inflation there are dollars when you spend them that cause inflation and other dollars when you spend them that don't cause inflation, right? You know, you can just spend, why not? Why don't we spend all those dollars right now then? I mean, what's the point? Why hold any of them back? We know you want $6 trillion for this crap. Why not 12? Why not $50 trillion? Only of those kind of dollars that don't cause inflation though, use those dollars. When you get the big pile of them, make sure you pick the one from the left pile, which is the pile that doesn't cause inflation, not from the other pile, because those might just cause inflation. I guess the problem over the past couple of years is we've been spending all of them out of the wrong pile. We keep spending the dollars that cause the inflation instead of the dollars that don't cause the inflation. Use the different kind of dollars. Easy peasy. By the way, did I mention she's the first African American to ever hold that job? And if you thought that was a terrible, crappy answer that she was fumbling through, almost like a combination of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, I don't know. Could she herself come up with a Veep thoughts? Probably so. But that being said, she's the first African-American to ever do that job. And if you are critical of her in any way, you're in the KKK. All right. You're an alt-right KKK member. Get your little uh, torch, your tiki torch out and walk in Charlottesville because that's who you are. I hope you understand it. Now, Joe Biden You might think we haven't heard much from Joe Biden today. What is the interesting thing he has to say about all of this? There's a lot of people talking about a potential uh, recession. And any time a president has to oversee a a recession, we see, you know, really bad results. I mean, if you remember, George H.W. Bush had an 80 percent approval rating a year before his uh, reelection attempt. And he lost partially because of Ross Perot, but also because he went into a very, very minor inflation, or excuse me, recession, and uh, that turned his election prospects around. So let's ask Joe what he thinks about the upcoming re- recession. I, 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 I probably, even more likely than ever. Not the majority of them aren't saying that. Come on, don't make things up, okay? Now you sound like a Republican politician. I'm joking. Um, that was a joke. That was a joke. But all kidding aside, no, I don't think it is. I was uh, talking to Larry Summers this morning, and uh, there's nothing inevitable about a recession. I don't want to put too fine a point on this, okay? But someone asked him, hey, looks like there might be a recession. And he says, that's absolutely wrong. Not, not the majority of people are saying that. Uh, you sound like a Republican politician when you say like that, just making stuff up. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. So he's gone through like 12 different layers of bizarre comments here. But then he has to come up with one name, one person, just name one person who says there isn't going to be a recession. That's all he has to do. He's saying he doesn't have to come up with all the people who are saying that. He just has to come up with one person who is an economist and is saying, ah, it's not going to be a recession, to, to bolster his point that not everybody is saying that. And the name he comes up with is Larry Summers. Let me give you Larry Summers' commentary on recessions from 48 hours earlier. My best guess is that a recession is ahead. (laughs) I base that on the fact that we haven't had a situation like the present with inflation above four and unemployment below four without a recession following within a year or two. And so I think the likelihood is that in order to do what's necessary to stop inflation, the Fed is going to raise interest rates enough that the economy will slip into recession. And I think that that view, which was not a common view a couple months ago, yeah. is now the view of a number of statistical models and the view of a range of uh, forecasters. Literally, he could have said anyone, anyone. He could have said Bob Fnarkinson, 
and people wouldn't have checked it because it's the media. No one would have known. The only guy he can't say in that spot is Larry Summers. Why? Because, first of all, he's, he, you mentioned you talked to him in the morning when two days earlier he was saying on national television, yeah, there's going to be a recession. Uh, it's coming. And he not only cites him, but then Larry Summers says it's the overwhelming majority of opinion of economists. So not only is he cite, does he cite the one guy he can't cite, but then that guy was on television completely refuting his point from just two days earlier. It is a master class in failure, this guy. I swear it. I, again, I've said this before, and I will say it a hundred more times over the next couple of years. I didn't have high hopes for a Biden presidency. I thought he would be a bad president. I thought he'd be incompetent. I thought he was not able to speak. Yet every single day he proves me wrong. He's much, much worse than I could have ever imagined. It's incredible. By the way, uh, we, we talked about the, the inflation. How does that inflation happen? Trillions and trillions of dollars being spent, first during the Trump administration with widespread approval by both sides of the aisle, and then into the Biden administration where he dumped another $2 trillion on top of it, which caused inflation. One way we know it caused inflation is that Larry Summers also said that. He was the guy warning everybody that there's going to be a bunch of inflation if you spend another $2 trillion. And we should note that after that $2 trillion was spent, then there was a bipartisan trillion dollars that was also spent on infrastructure. If you think we're forgetting about that, Republicans, we're not. In fact, most of this spending was done by the approval of various Republicans. So it's not just the Democrats for this. However, Joe Biden and his policies have made this much, 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 much worse. And they're responsible for the vast majority of this problem. And that is important. So now we've given all of this money to people. And now then we've inflated the economy so that that money is worth less and less. One economist decided to uh, look at this, and he, he tweeted this. I thought this was pretty interesting. A family of four received $10,400 in economic impact payments. Does include a UI, student loan pause, etc. JEC Republicans estimate typical family has paid four to $6,000 more due to inflation. This is all inflation, not just incremental. So it will be another 10 to 12 months. 10 to 12 months for what? 10 to 12 months until we wipe out all of the free money that we gave to people. All of the free money that we gave to people gone because of inflation within two years of signing that last bill. Do you know how much? What could you do with a couple trillion dollars? Do you think you can maybe not blow it up in a couple of years? Well, you're different than the president then. And I don't know, maybe you can even balance yourself on a bicycle. Like there's all sorts of differences between you and him. And I don't know. I feel like I'd rather have you. I don't know who you are, to be clear. I don't know who you are. OK, you might be watching the show and you say, I know who I am and I know who you are, but I'm here. I can't see you. I'm just sitting here talking to a camera in a room almost by myself. I'm just blabbing and ranting. And I don't know if anybody's out there watching, but whoever you are, I'd rather have you as president. I don't you have no qualifications. What if you say, I don't even know anything about these issues. I'm watching your show so I can learn from you because you seem like you can get through a full sentence without stumbling or falling over. And you know what? Anybody who can get through a full sentence without stumbling or falling over would be a better president than this guy. He is a complete catastrophe in every single aspect. The things that he brags about are failures. He tries to cite one economist who agrees with him, and he picks the guy who not only warned about the inflation in advance, but then also just said, we're going into a recession. He is a walking and often falling over catastrophe.